the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, tell my people three things they need to do in this time of recession. And that's what I want to share with you. Three things to do. First of all, I want you to come with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. This verse of scriptures sounds like a puzzle. But the Spirit of God kept impressing my heart to read it to you. Economic recession is very real. Both from factual point of view and scriptural point of view. Factual in the sense that we have diverse information all pointing to the fact that look this is a different season altogether completely different season altogether nations where you hardly hear of people losing their jobs massively we are hearing news from all those nations today from the west from the east from the middle east and there are millions losing their jobs cost of living on the increase and scripturally speaking, over and over again, we've made references in the days of the patriarchs in the faith. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, recession, all of their times. And Jesus prophesying, among other things, he said there shall be famines. He didn't even make it singular, famines, being serious. Matthew 24, 7, there shall be famines. And Jesus said, when these things begin to happen, he said, lift up your head. Look up. Because for you, your salvation draweth nigh. Say with me, my salvation is here. My salvation is here. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. When they are looking around, we are looking up. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And as I look up, he will not suffer my foot to be moved. So, you know, that sounds like a paradox. If you don't want to fall, what do you do? You look down in the natural. But in this kingdom, God says, if you don't want your foot to sleep, what do you do? Look up. That is, as you look up, I take care of the ground. In the world, they look around. In the kingdom, we look up. So don't look around. When you look around, you will end as a wanderer. You'll be wandering until you end as a wanderer. Look up. Psalm 25, 15. He said, my eyes are towards you. And as I do, you will deliver my feet from the net. Look up. Look up. Don't join them in looking around. Luke 21, 27. He said, look up. Lift up your head for your salvation. Draw it nigh. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. Or verse 14, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. Do what? When things are working, I'm very buoyant. Get excited. But in the day of adversity, consider. That is, don't complain. Think. Consider. In the day of prosperity, oh, everybody's excited. Oh, there is boom. Excited. And when things are going down as it is today, complain. Murmuring. But God says for you, consider. Think. And why? He said, because God also had set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. So what are we doing at this moment as believers? We are considering. We are considering. We are giving ourselves to sound reasoning. You see, a fool looks. The wise observes. There's a difference between looking and observing. Observation leads to discovery. Observe. Because everything happening, according to the scriptures, has a meaning. God has set one against the other. So for you, think, consider. That should form the basis of what we're looking at. Now, commanding advancement in recession is the topic for this prophetic teaching. Commanding advancement in recession how do i advance at this season of recession this teaching goes with a lot of responsibility and i assume i'm talking to people who are prepared to accept responsibility people who are both making confession and are taking steps 
Our theme for this month goes much more with confession. When men are cast down, I shall say, there's a lifting up. So there is the saying, but there is also the doing. What do I do to make what I am saying to happen? And I'll give it to you the way the Lord said it to me. He said, tell my people three things to do in the time of recession. And the number one thing he said, tell them to eat moderately. Tell them to moderate their taste for pleasure. This recession in all probability will last for a while. So let them be wise and eat moderately. Proverbs 23 verses 1 to 3. He said, when thou sittest with a king, consider what is set before you. Consider what is set before you. And among other things that if you are one given to appetite, put a knife in your throat. Put a knife in your throat. Eat moderately. Moderately. Have pleasure moderately because there is a plan ahead of you. Don't starve. Don't punish yourself. God has promised you to eat. You know, in Joel chapter 2, from verses 1 to 26 or 7, he said, Rejoice and be glad, O land. Be not afraid, for God will do great things. He said, Your floor shall be filled with flour. Your vine will burst forth with oil. And that the, my people shall eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord our God. You will eat and be satisfied, but don't eat as a drunkard. Don't eat excessively. Inside every fruit is a seed. This is the time to identify and draw a line between the fruit and the seed. Because what will make you survive this time and beyond is the seed you separate from the fruit. I want you to follow this as prophetic instructions. Eat moderately. Eat only what is necessary at your level. I'm talking in relative terms now because we have different levels. Eat moderately because you may not always have the fruits. If I may put it in another way, behave maturely in handling your resources. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, he said, Woe unto you, O land, when your king is a child, who eat in the morning. Please permit my thinking. I want to think, I want to think that adults are expected not to be addicted to breakfast if they cannot completely avoid it. Please permit me. I didn't say God said it. I said, I think so, from that scriptures. He said, Woe unto you, O land, when your child is a king, who eat in the morning. And that is to say, when you can't eat breakfast, don't let it bother you. It's children who cry when they wake up for hunger. And it's part of the process of the things you plan for. He said, but blessed are thou, O land, when your king is one of the sons of, one of the princes of the land, who eats only for strength and not for pleasure. Matured people places tomorrow above pleasure. Eat moderately. Dress moderately. Drink moderately. Because... In the time of prosperity, you are joyful. In the time of adversity, you are considering. You are thinking. You are reasoning. You are planning. You are creative. You are innovative. Number two, we go in bits and pieces so we can get to do everything within the time that's available to us. Number two, invest prudently. Invest prudently. Save properly. Gather the fragments. Jesus said. Gather the fragments. Gather the excess. After Jesus fed 5,000 people. And um, I could imagine. That he saw them trampling upon what remains. You know. When people are fed. You see them messing up with food. You give your child food. And on finish eating. Tear the bread in pieces. Play with the food. That means the child is full. When a child is not full, every grain of rice will be picked. <laughs> he will pick every grain straight to his mouth. And as they were trampling on the fragments, please say with me, fragments. Jesus said, gather it. Gather. And as they gathered the fragments, it became basket full. Twelve. Now, fragments is what one would consider to be insignificant. Now, from your insignificance, 
you can raise capital. The 12 baskets represent capitals. From insignificance, you can raise capital. Did you hear what somebody said tonight? I said it's prophetic testimony. 1,000 naira just seven, 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 seven. Where is that young man? And come on here. I want to ask you some questions. We're in lecture so we can learn. It's strange. It's a strange testimony. 1,007 and it became 1. Point what? 1.5. Now, for how long did you do that? Five years, sir. Amen. For five years, discipline of not touching it. That calls for discipline. That you just, every day, you are throwing it there and forgetting it there. Not that you wake up and say, I'm under pressure. I need to pay house rent. After five years. The five years perhaps will have looked very long. He put a knife in his throat. Didn't you like to be drinking coke and all of that that time? <laughs> and eating hamburger and getting uh, fatter cheeks. <laughs> That was a good job you did. I'm impressed. The Lord will honor you. From there, got married. From there, bought a car. What did he do? He was... Invest. What does it mean to invest? To invest means to separate. To separate. And it comes with a choice to separate. Jesus said, gather the fragments. How many of us today seated here would think 1,000 is important? But you need to know the importance now after a period of time cumulatively it became important some other fellows within the same period will have squandered so much and when it is time to wait will not only print card but print appeal letter brethren whatsoever the lord lays on your heart thou shall give the lord loves a cheerful giver if you have anything to send to me please find my account number i'll call you again and then he will send texts to several people honorable dignified wedding you think you don't have something jesus said we're going for the next crusade i won't pray for you when we get there gather the fragments carry it on your head one per apostle <laughs> to the next crusade it's not every day jesus prayed for food to multiply it's not every day you need to pray for money check around you what are the fragments here what are you doing with forecasts when you need money to run your business what are you doing with air conditioner in your room when there is no food to eat? God forbid. I can't sell my property. Then your head will be turning the way you are moving your <laughs> Gather the fragments. You know what that means? Gather the scraps. If you have cars or other items in your house that are scraps, don't let them rust under your roof. One may sell for 10000 the other may sell for 5000 One may sell for 25000 Before you know it, something is made up. God is not against investment. Now, way back in the days of Joseph, when the famine, the day of plenty came, Joseph said, well, let's build you know, uh, silos. Let's preserve the food. And all of that happened. But a few years after, when they began to eat and the food was diminishing, the people came to Joseph and said, Hey, we don't have any money to buy a game. Buy us. Buy our land. And Joseph said, That's alright. I buy you. But we will not consume everything. We will save 20%. We will save 20%. Now, the, the biting started in the fourth or the fifth year. And there are two more years to go. And Joseph introduced the principle of savings. In order for them to sustain themselves in the two remaining years ahead of them. This thing may be longer than you think. Therefore, plan. plan. You see, when you plan, you fear less. Planning helps to, to relax you from fear and apprehension. Of course, not that you trust in your plan, but you trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on to your own idea. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. We will come to that before we close. So, invest. And I'll quickly like to show to you five things that will help you in such step of investment. Number one, invest intelligently or strategically. Invest strategically, intelligently. Now, you see, I know you have faith. And permit me to say with all sense of responsibility, is we who taught you that faith. So, you can't harass us that you have faith. So, we are teaching you faith additives faith what 
additives. You know, in the in chemical um, experiments, you have the main substance and you have the additives. Faith is the main substance, but faith does not work independently. That there are additives that boost the effect of the faith. Faith and planning goes together. Invest strategically, and like I said, for that you can employ Joseph's principle. Genesis chapter 47, read from verses 23 to 27. I want you to do something, no matter how small. Make a decision today that you'll be saving certain percentage of your earning. Decide. If I may say this to you, the reason why things are working for us in the ministry is because as a ministry, we employed that to our resources. We're building hundreds of churches all across the world today without putting a stress on anyone in the church. Why? Because in the days of prosperity, we learned to separate what must not be eaten. And there is no better testimony than the one you've had. That you can, you can use the smallest resources to do that. The mistake some of us think, make is that we want to have something big to invest. I have always believed that small or big is a relative term. Big to somebody may make one million. Big to another person may make 100 million. Big to another person may make 10 naira. Because it's so tight for him to bring that out. But whatever it is, make a decision. I will separate this from whatever comes to me. For ease, you can use percentage. For ease and orderliness, you can use percentage. So that you will not get back tomorrow and be begging for somebody for food. As Joseph was saving, the others were buying and eating. And when there was nothing more, the money failed. They came to Jesus and said, buy us. Buy us. We will serve you. We are hungry. We are dying. Buy us. Buy our land. <laughs> Joseph said, I'll buy all of you. I'll buy you. I'll buy you. You will buy. Amen. I say you will buy. Amen. I say you will buy. Amen. So invest strategically. Number two, under investment. Invest discretionally. Invest discretionally. Psalm 112 verse 5, the Bible says, The righteous man shall guide his affairs with discretion. The word discretion, among other things, goes for priority setting. Set your priorities right. And in the light of this, I want to say specifically, according to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27, Proverbs 24, 27, what does he say there? He said, prepare thy work in the field. Make it fit for yourself. That is, establish it, fortify it. Strengthen it. And afterward, build your house. House represents pleasure. By priority, build and build and invest in your business, in your career. Prepare your work. Prepare your work. Make it fit. Give it strong footing and stability. Do you know, no matter what happens, there are certain businesses that will never be moved. I tell you, the root is so firm. It's like palm tree that has taken root down. You all know you've watched certain natural disasters all around the world. The tsunami is there. The uh, uh, no, hurricanes are there. In the midst of houses pulling down, you see, see some structures standing. The wind blows. <laughs> the structures uh, uh, try a bit more. <laughs> Prepare thy work in the field. Set your priorities. What should I do first with my resources? There will always be time for pleasure. But there may never be all the time for your savings. You can defer pleasure. But you can't defer the well-being of your business. Invest discretionally even among the various businesses you are running you need to know which is major and which can yield for you better 
which can be the arrowhead for you. There are certain businesses that are not, as it were, good yielding. You need to use discretion. Which one is the arrowhead? Which one can I do that is going to bring me more discretion? The righteous man shall guide his affairs with discretion. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three way of investment. Invest boldly. Be courageous to invest. And I, <laughs> because of what had happened last year um, in the, the stock market. A lot of people are cautious now not to invest. The world is a risky world. There is no risk-free zone in this world. Now, I'll be showing to you the safeguard for courageous uh, investment uh, shortly. But be bold. Be courageous. Now, Isaac invested and people came and covered the well. They ran down his business. But the Bible says, Isaac digged again. He walked away from the business that crumbled. That time, Isaac's business was irrigation. Perhaps the pump failed in the borehole. Perhaps some saboteurs came in the night and threw some stones there and covered the well. That's what the Bible says. Out of hatred. If you call it, if you like it, because it, well, perhaps you couldn't find who did that, you can call it natural disaster. But he walked away from it and digged again. They came after him, covered it. He went forward and digged again. Went forward and digged it. You need courage. You need persistence. Perhaps a number of us seated here uh, fell with the crisis of the stock market and perhaps even the banks are pursuing you right now. Walk away <laughs> from what failed and go and do it again. He digged again. He was persistent. Genesis 26, at least three times the Bible tells us he digged again. Genesis 26 verses 18 21 and 22. He went and digged again. If you read furthermore towards the end of that chapter, you'll find out that when he was resting, his servants also saw what happened to him and they also went and digged and they found water. You'll never find the next treasure except you take a bold step. The story of all who have made it today has one common factor. They were courageous. They were on the floor but they were bold to stand up. Invest and invest. Praise God. Number four, invest prayerfully. Prayerfully. Why do you need to pray? Because the dynamism of the system is so intricate and very swift. Things change so fast. So you need to pray for what specifically? For divine guidance. Because certain investments may look beautiful and attractive now but there is danger inside it so the advantage we have as children of god is that while we are going to invest we are praying in the spirit for he that prays in an unknown tongue nobody knows what he's saying how be it in the spirit he speaks mystery oh bayana sakatari thank you jesus you are walking around in your office, a blank coat of a sticky tie. You walk into the toilet. Somebody say, What are you saying? Uh, just that's all right. Let's shake up and listen. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. What are you saying? And then he either speaks to you or he blocks your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Pray. That's the advantage you have. Now, the very primary advantage that Isaac had over the Philistines is divine guidance. And the Lord says, Stay here. Is that all right? I stay here. I stay here. Yes, I'm here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. Yes, thank you. And the Lord says, so in the land. Oh, yeah. So in what? Okay. To be digging well. Why not? Let's go and dig well. And as he dug the well. He said, but they are covering it. He said, go and dig another one. He was moving by guidance. And in one year, in one year, we are not great people. We are only guided people. 
So you invest courageously but under divine guidance. You are taking step but you are taking it with final you know, instruction from the Lord. What do I do, Lord? What do I do, Lord? What do I do, Lord? Connected in the spirit. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Divine guidance is God's response to your prayer. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you do not know and others cannot know. That's why when God shows you something, he makes sure no other person knows it. <laughs> he carries the package, puts it in your heart, cover it, and blocks every other person's mind. So before they wake up, they will only try to copy you, but because you are original, they are copies, they take the remnants, you take the major. What happened in Philistine? Isaac are taking the major. And they were taking, sharing the remnant. He became stronger and richer than a whole nation, including their king. Hey, they say, Isaac, come on. What's happening here? We will cover your well. Uh, he said, no, you can cover the well. I have the original method. <laughs> Went and took the well again. He said, how ah, come? Let's go and cover it again. Cover it. Destroyers have access to the product, not to the process. Not to the source. So when people try to destroy what you are doing, tell them, go ahead. Thank you. And then go and do it. I was telling one of our pastors a few days ago, I said, thieves steal products. They can't steal the process. So when your thing is stolen, go and reproduce it. Amen. I've never been bothered anytime somebody stole my money. That's what he saw. The remaining is inside here. I just generated bring it out again. He thinks he has taken my life. No, don't behave as if somebody took your life for stealing your money. He took what he saw. There is so much inside you that is yet to be seen, that is yet to be brought out. Be persistent and then be courageous and then be prayerful. And then number five under investment before we go to the last point is invest with faith in the covenant. Invest with faith in the the covenant. Faith in the covenant. Now, I'd like you to see something here, people of God. The covenant is a plus to you. The covenant draws a line between the sinner and you. The sinner can labor and sweat and have sleepless night. But covenant people will do a bit and go to rest. Paul was walking with covenant mentality. I, Paul, plant. Apollos, water. God gives the increase. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14, is all about the covenant. What does the covenant say? He said, the Lord shall open the treasure of heaven. He shall open his treasure in heaven and pour down his blessing upon the works of your hands. So it is not the works of your hands that is making you great. It is the covenant that opened the heaven to you. Otherwise, why do people look at us and say, we can't see the sweat, yet we can't deny the result? The covenant is working. Yes. They say your own is different. You are smiling every day. Are you, are you in this country? <laughs> the covenant is working when you go to sleep. He said the kingdom of God is as a man who planted his seed in the field and goes to sleep. And morning, afternoon, morning, evening, he sleeps and he wakes up. And he does not know how. Covenant people don't know how things work because the covenant is awake when they go to sleep. This is a plus to you. From now, no one will see your sweat again. So when you are investing, invest with covenant sense that other things may crash, but your own cannot crash. Covenant sense. Covenant sense. Covenant sense. That when you are selling cars, other people's cars may be stalled at the border or at the seaport, but they clear your own. Why? The covenant mark is on it. Clear it. Clear it. Clear it. Others may import goods with promises from buyers that will buy. Don't worry, we'll buy when it comes. And they are not buying. But before your own arrive, they are lined up at your door because the covenant is moving them. Go and buy from him. Go and buy from Move. I hit your Move. Go and buy from him. <laughs> Oof. The covenant is working. The covenant is working. The covenant is working. I have that covenant sense as a pastor. Why is some church growing and the other is not growing? The one pastor believes that this is his word. So he goes on. He fasts five times every week. 
God. They say, Pastor, won't you go home? He said, No, this is a serious matter. I can't, I'm sleeping at the altar. Oh God. Because he thinks it is by might or by power. The man, the man with the covenant sense says, Lord, what you said for me to tell the people I've told them. And I thank you because you have taken charge. You confirm the word of your servant and perform the counsel of your messenger. Thank you. Good night. See you in the morning. That's why I'm not sweating. I sleep the way you sleep. Oh. When I stay awake, I stay awake busy doing my work. Last night I was off for close to four hours just doing my work. Including the teaching you are hearing now. Doing my work. Just enjoying myself in God's presence. No wala. No disturbance. My wife won't hear my noise of praying. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Why? I, I am so conscious of the covenant because I know what God tells me to do and what he promised to do when I do what I, he tells me to do. He said, these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if thou will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. So I say, Lord, what are you saying? And when he speaks to me, I say, is that so? Okay, let's go. We do it. And as I do it, he performs his wonders. He tells me, among other things, when I teach you, I should teach with passion. So I do my work. He tells me to care for you, so I care for you. He tells me to pray for you, so I pray for you. So he does the rest. The covenant. I want you to be, please be covenant-minded as business people. If you are sweating the way they are sweating, you have reduced yourself. That's why when they are talking, the things they are talking about, how they are failing and things are not working, you have no business sitting with them. He said, blessed is the man who seated not in the counsel of the ungodly. But when they are talking, he takes his seat and moves away from them and he sits down and he's meditating upon his word day and night. He said, He shall be as a tree planted by the water side that brings forth his fruit in this due season and his leaf does not wither <laughs> and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. First of all, he didn't sit with them. He separates himself as a covenant person. You never heard that Isaac was seated amongst them. He was a covenant person. Given to just focusing on what God has said. Hallelujah. You are a covenant child of God. You are not doing business the way they are doing business. You may have the same profession, but you have different sources. They were in the same class. Shedap, Mesak, and Abednego, and Daniel with others. But they were ten times better. Why? Others were learning horizontally. The four boys were learning vertically. Others were learning with their eyes, observing the wind. Hey, what is stock market saying? What about New York? Stock market? I see yen. Fearing. <laughs> and yen said, I'm yearning. <laughs> what about pounds? How heavy is pounds now? <laughs> pounds say, I'm light now. <laughs> but you are receiving connection from hell. The covenant. Invest with covenant sense that for you, all you lay your hands on to do shall prosper. So when you send a truck, from Lagos to Abuja, no accident. Amen. Why? It's covenant truck. Covenant truck. Covenant truck. Your goods are being freighted from India. No pot congestion. No demorage. That will swallow the profit. Why? The covenant is working. It will work for you. Amen. Now, number three thing the Lord asked me to tell you to do in the time of recession is to give generously give generously number one eat moderately two invest prudently number three give generously now at this time people's hands are like this not only like this in the open but in the pocket no devil can take this thing from me uh, let them say anything they say your mother is sick. He said, um, I'll pray for her. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, send healing. In fact, uh, where's uh, Bishop's number? Give me his number. I want to, I want man to from him to send to my mother. They say your mother wants to die. You say, I, your mother that born you. <laughs> Not say, oh, you have another mother. Why? One thing people have difficulty doing at this time is to give. But hear me? Giving is security to savings. 
You can save, but you cannot secure what you saved. Given. Your giving is the security to your savings. I like you at this time to become a generous giver. A mad giver. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered back also. Proverbs 11, 24 to 27. There is he that scattereth, yet increaseth. There is he that withhold more than his meat, yet he tends to poverty. Now listen, don't eat to die. Elijah met that woman, the widow of Zarephath. He said, woman, what's happening? <laughs> the woman said, we have some little flour remaining. We just want to make some meal from it and to eat and die. You know the meaning of that? What kills people is poison. There are things you are not permitted to eat. You eat it and die. Elijah came at the right time. You see, many of us don't know how prophetic that visit was to the woman. Elijah was actually sent to preserve the woman, not to eat from her home. Because before, she met, before he met the woman, he has been eating. So when I tell you to give, you don't think because there is a need. No. I tell you, when you give to me, you are not helping me. No. You are not helping me. No, you are not helping me. No, don't think you are helping me. Don't think you are helping the church. No. So I say, okay, before I thought I should give to him, but now uh, I won't give to him. Keep it properly in your pocket. What God sent Elijah to do from the revelation God gave me this afternoon is that the woman ought to have paid her tithe, given her offerings, she was eating and eating and eating and thinking that she would make up. And she was to eat the last poison. And Elijah said, hey, you don't know why you are dying. You don't know why you are reducing. You are eating what you ought not to eat. So don't eat and die. Give to live. And when she gave, she lived. Even though it was the last one. Even though it was the last. Many of us don't know that what we are taking is poison. Now look at Proverbs. He said, There is he that scattered and increases, and there is he that withholds more than is necessary. So there is a limit to which you are not permitted to keep. There is he that withholds. You don't withhold everything. There is a measure you are not allowed to withhold. Anything beyond that level becomes toxic. Now, in the drinks we drink, in the food we eat, there is a measure that is toxic. Am I saying something? Um, I'm sure some nutritionists are here with me. That's why they tell you what to eat in their moderations. They tell you, for instance, they tell you, you should eat this number of eggs per week. That's, that's healthy for you. And anything beyond that number becomes toxic. In the same way, there is God says, save your money. But as you are saving, let there be a gauge. A gauge. A gauge. Where should the limit of the saving be so that the remaining can go out? Oh, maybe somebody just finished eating in the White House. So, man, this meal is so wonderful. The next one week, I won't go to the toilet. <laughs> And then they should start digging his grave <laughs> because the food inside the food as sweet as it is there is toxic and if you withhold it beyond measure it will kill you the woman said we want to eat and die elijah said that's why i'm here give it out give it out don't eat or die eat and live and when the woman went and did it the prophet looked at her and said well you've done what is right your flour will not waste your oil will not dry. And she ate for a whole year. From one meal, she ate 365 times 3. One meal, 365. Don't eat and die. Give and live. Be generous. Sacrifice your way out of hardship. Tight your escape from tightness. This is the time most people want to keep what they have. Keep what you can and can what you, you know, uh, <laughs> have. 
But history from scriptures reveals the more you give, the happier you live, the freer you live, the healthier you live. And above all, the more joyous you become. What you have makes you happy. What you give makes you joyous. They are two different things. What you have. I have a new car. I have a new house. We are happy. But when you give out, you give out a house, you give out a car, you are joyous. How do you feel if somebody takes something from you? From you. You give it to him and he's walking away. Oh, glory to God. That's my greatest time of joy. Three things to do. Eat moderately. Invest prudently. And give generously. There is no business school where they will teach you this one. All the business schools now are teaching on how to get more, how to keep, how to get, how to keep, how to get, how to keep. Don't let them frustrate you. You are a man of the spirit. Follow the scriptures to guarantee your future. So I'd like you to draw a new program, a program for your eating, a program for your investment, and a program for your giving. I give the hardest when my need is obvious. I give the hardest when my need is obvious because I have discovered that I cannot meet my need. What I have is too small to meet my need. So I put it in the hand of God to multiply my resources. And he has never failed. He has never failed. He has never failed. He has never failed. And he will not fail you. And he will not fail you. Please beware. Don't save everything because you may find yourself saving some poison along. Your giving is a security for your savings. May the Lord bless you. May I say finally, don't trust in riches. Psalm 62 verse 10, if riches increase, do not set your eyes on it. Do not set your eyes on it. If riches increase, do not set your eyes on him. Proverbs 11, 28. He that trusted in his riches shall fall. But the righteous who do things rightly shall flourish as a branch. Proverbs 11, 28. Don't miss that. You write it. Go and read at home. He that trusted in his riches shall fall. But the righteous who does it rightly shall flourish. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge them which are rich among you. Charge them. That they be not high-minded. That they boast not on what they have. But that they trust in the living God. Who giveth us all things freely to enjoy. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. He said that they do good works. That they do good works. That they be generous. And by that he said they are laying off for themselves. Treasures in the time to come. They are laying for themselves treasures in the time to come. Shout hallelujah. Say with me, I will not eat to die. I will give to live. Now, don't turn money to God. It's about becoming that now. People can fight and kill on money now. Don't turn money to God. You know what to do with money? Humble money by giving it out. Nothing humiliates money. Nothing destroys your sense of attachment to money like giving. People who give don't count money as anything. Thou shalt not serve God and mammon. If you don't want mammon to become your God, serve God with your mammon. If you don't want mammon to become your God, serve God with that mammon. Anything you use to serve God can never lord it over you. It's a new day for you. May I ask you to ensure that get back home, have a program. A program of what to eat. If you are married, you and your wife, moderate. Don't put pressure on your resources. Moderate. Moderate. Things to buy. Things to wear. You don't have to wear new dresses every week. You are going somewhere. Nobody knew the color that you wore last week. You are not impressing anybody. Do, never be found borrowing to buy a car. Never. Never. If I hear that you did that, I pursue you to your village. Collect the car from you trek with your leg. Amen? Amen? Please obey these things. One precious mother met me one day. She was so excited that she bought a new car. 
and she asked me to come and pray on it. And when I came out, I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, what do I do? I said, return it. And she did. And now, after doing that, things began to open up. Began to open up. I said, the money you are owing, have you paid? He said, no. I can't bless this car. I'm not a blind pastor. I'm not a stupid father. Trouble is still ahead. I can't go and sleep. Go and return it. Hard instruction. But may I escape destruction. You will not suffer. Yeah. In a way, the Holy Spirit must have spoken to a number of us here. You should know what to do by now. Business is panting for survival. And there are things that you can turn to make you escape. Take steps. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless these great children of yours. Rise to your feet. I bless them in your name. I've done what you commanded me to do. And I thank you for the privilege to do it. And I thank you because your word has come from heaven as rain. It will never return void until it has accomplished the purpose of which it is sent. And now in the name of Jesus, O oh God of heaven and hearts, thank you. Before I pray, or continue the prayer, if you are here, you are not born again, let me give you a chance. Things will get tougher for the world. But for the saints, things will get smoother. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you want to do so, and I think you would like to do so. For your obedience, go and experience a big catch. Go and experience a big catch. Go and experience a big catch. In this time of recession, I see you advancing. Others may be reversing. I see you accelerating. Others may be slowing down. I see you gaining speed. Others may be selling to eat. I see you buying to feed more people. Others may be stagnated, not knowing what to do in confusion. Selling themselves, selling their land. I see you enlarging your coaster. Bring the hand to your head. I decree right now, sound, creative, innovative ideas. When you sleep, you will know what to do. When you wake up, the dreams of the night will wake up with you. When you wake up early in the morning, seated at your table, the dew of heaven, oh, the dew of heaven, with clear analytical ideas, step by step, things to do, things that are writable and practicable, rest upon your mind. I bless you tonight. Jesus' wonderful name. You are blessed. In Jesus' glorious name. All who believe they are blessed shout aloud, Amen. Amen.